Executive Director of Theatre Museum Canada, who is the co-sponsor of this uh, event. And also I'd like to thank Jimmy Simon, who is sitting back there, for helping to make sure that this uh, can be a part of your curriculum, because I think it's a, a really sort of useful kind of way of uh, extending some of the stuff that I'm trying to teach you. <laughs> <laughs> Unsuccessfully. <laughs> um, however, so today, what we are doing <laughs> Will it be on test? Will it be on test? Absolutely. <laughs> Everything is on test. Everything is on test. That's my rule. Um, is, uh, so today what we're going to be doing is talking about uh, a production that took place in 1974. Uh, it started in Toronto and then went on uh, for uh, a bunch of Canadian tours and tours in various other places as well. Uh, this is called Ten Lost Years and it was based on a book of oral histories by a Canadian journalist named Barry Broadfoot, who had recorded uh, voices of people remembering their experiences of the years 1929 to 1939. So it's, an oral, it's a, a group of oral histories uh, around personal reminiscences of the Great Depression in Canada. Um, today we have with us an, a very august group of people, uh, <laughs> many of whom were directly involved with the production uh, some people who were involved with the company that produced it, and some people who have been involved in the studying of it. So this is all, is we have a, a great sort of variety of perspectives. Um, we'll start on this side. Uh, this is Diane Douglas, who was in the original Canuck, uh, company of Ten Lost Years, and uh, worked at Toronto Workshop Productions for about five years. Um, also has since worked at the Shaw Festival, the Stratford Festival, and uh, across Canada in various forms and so on and so forth on the boards, has been a staple of the Canadian film and television industry for the last, we won't say how long, uh, <laughs> and uh, is perhaps best known I to some of you as the lady in the Good Things Grow in Ontario <laughs> commercial. <laughs> yeah! who was the lighting in the original pro program. I love this. It just says lighting. <laughs> it doesn't say designer. It didn't say that he was the guy who actually did all the thing and put it together, this beautiful idea that people, will, I'm sure, will mention. Um, but he was the lighting person uh, on, on, on the original production um, and uh, worked with Toronto Workshop Productions for a number of years, three years. Uh, and uh, at the, uh, he has also been the production uh, coordinator at Bar uh, Barry's Griffin Theatre. And since uh, he is about to enter his 35th season as the head electrician, not as the head electrician, but 35th season as an electrician, now the head electrician at the Stratford Festival. And as he put it to me, he has probably seen more performances on the Stratford Festival stage than any person alive or dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason that That's for you. Time. That's for you. Yes. <laughs> Next to him is Alan Filewad, who is a professor of Canadian theatre and theatre in general at the University of Guelph. Um, he, is, he researches and writes on the history of activist political theatre in particular. He's been a drama critic for CBC Radio, editor of the Canadian Theatre Review, uh, written several books on political theatre and Canadian theatre history, including... Collective Encounters, Documentary Theatre in English Canada, which is probably the first, uh, and then one hates to say only, <laughs> and therefore standard <laughs> scholarly treatments of Canadian theatre and the collective movement of the 1970s. Um, 
Next to him is Maya Ardol, who is, uh, she spent several years at Toronto Workshop Productions undergoing training with George Luscombe, who she, which she will talk about um, in, a, in, a, in an idea called the efforts, which is what George called the way that he trained. Um, and text analysis, performing in a number of shows, including, uh, which was a wonderful solo performance by Maya, in uh, Dario Fo and Franca Rame's Female Parts, um, Mr. Bones, The Working Man, Mr. Pickwick, and Fanchen. She is also a past artistic director of Young People's Theatre. Uh, she was the artistic director for eight years. Uh, perhaps her, her no most notable production at Young People's Theatre was called Whale, which won a number of Dora Awards and also toured to uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, Maya is Maya, one of Maya's pride, I think I, we might say, about her tenure at, at Young People's Theatre is her efforts to extend uh, racial and cultural diversity in the area of casting at Young People's Theatre. She was a, a strong leader in the area of cultural diversity in Canadian theatre while she was, particularly while she was uh, artistic director at Young YPT. Um, last year she was the interim artistic director of Nightwood Theatre. At present, she is the playwright in residence at Nightwood Theatre. Uh, and she is working on adapting the book The Prisoner of Tehran by Marina Neymat for the stage. Maya is also a member of the Big Win Collective, a group of immigrant theatre artists creating theatre pieces about immigrants in Toronto. She is the co-founder of Contrary Company, a company based on making theatre flexible and accessible, particularly through workshops and mentorships and led by women. Uh, her first play, which she wrote, was produced at Tarragon Theatre, the National Arts Centre, and has also been produced in Massachusetts and Iceland, uh, known as Mid that was Midnight Sun. Uh, she is a contributing writer to a book called How Theatre Educates, published by the University of Toronto Press. She is the 19, uh, 2002 winner of the George Luscombe Award in Men for Mentorship in Theatre. And <laughs> wow. she is currently <laughs> and she is currently performing in her own solo show called You Fancy Yourself at Theatre Pass Marai <laughs> until February 14th. Uh, Maya and everyone on this panel encourage you, encourages you to go to see it. Um, uh, you Fancy Yourself has just come back from a successful tour to BC, it's toured Ontario, and it is, there are plans to tour to Ireland and Iceland as well. Next to her. <laughs> Next to her, we have Peter Millard, who trained with George Luscombe starting in 1972 and was involved with various productions in Toronto, with Toronto Workshop Productions over the next 13 years, uh, including the first production of Ten Lost Years. Um, I should mention that Maya actually was not in the first production of Ten Lost Years. She was, uh, I think, were you busy with other show, TWP shows at the time? Or on? No, I think I was uh, mo moved on moved to on. directing. <laughs> moved on way. to directing. There you have it, eh? But didn't you, did you come back after that? In uh, there was a little jump to do female parts. Right. Yeah. Right. Anyhow. Okay. Um, <laughs> so he acted in the original production of Ten Lost Years as well as in uh, the national tours. And he is about to start his 23rd consecutive season at the Shaw Festival. <laughs> oh Look at that, eh? <laughs> That's shocking. That's shocking. It's pretty old, huh? That is. <laughs> <a, laughs> yeah! 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 That is uh, As well as his uh, association with Toronto Workshop Productions, Shaw, he's been involved in, in many productions at other theaters, including the Toronto premiere of The Normal Heart for which he was nominated for a Dora Award, and Little Mercy's First Murder at the Tarragon Theatre, for which he won a Dora Maver Moore Award. Wow. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, at my extreme left, is Cedric Smith, uh, who comes out of the self-taught school of training. Uh, he was an apprentice at Stratford in the mid-60s, and then uh, left that scene and became a folk singer. Uh, he was involved in the 60s folk scene in Chicago and Toronto and Detroit through the 60s. And uh, he was a founding member of and a sort of creative force behind a group called the Perth County Conspiracy Does Not Exist, known to those of us of a certain age as Perth County Conspiracy or just Perth PCC. County. Um, and the Perth County Conspiracy, I asked my wife, who was also of a certain age, uh, what Perth County Conspiracy was, and she said, it's an iconic Canadian folk group. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and so uh, 
So the Perth County Conspiracy included um, folk songs, obviously that sort of 60s folk kind of thing, and also some of Cedric's uh, what we might call character monologues. He was uh, he had a beautiful, his voice is <coughs> gorgeous and he's been making a living using it for a long time. Um, and and uh, these monologues about characters that he had created or met or uh, imagined in his travels, particularly in and around Perth County, which is the county where Stratford is, just for people who don't know their <coughs> Ontario counties. <laughs> um, the, the Perth County Conspiracy was based in a coffee house <coughs> in Stratford called the Black Swan, which through the late 60s and early 70s kind of was set up as a, or, or began to be read as a kind of anti-Stratford festival, <coughs> where there was English and Shakespeare and people talking in funny accents and wearing nice clothes. At the festival theater in the Black Swan, there was folk singing and real Canadian dope. stuff and... Dope. Yeah. And dope. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk about that. Um, this is, we were all for free expression, except when it's going to get me in trouble. Uh, <laughs> uh, since then, since, uh, he was also involved in, the, in a number of productions of Toronto Workshop Productions, including uh, he is a writer, well, an adapter, composer, songwriter, actor in the original production of Ten Lost Years. Um, he toured Canada with a national tour of Billy Bishop Goes to War, uh, playing in places big and small, including uh, the Royal Alexandra Theatre and many smaller theatres in smaller towns in northern parts of Canada. Uh, he, has worked, he then moved on to sort of becoming a, a stalwart of the Canadian television scene. Yes. He was a series lead on The Campbells and The Road to Avonlea, well known for that. And then uh, in this, more, more recently he's moved on to voiceover work, again putting his larynx to work, as he told me on the phone one time. Uh, doing a lot of voiceover work, uh, most notably narrations on the History Channel, and also, for those of you of another certain age, Professor X on the X-Men. Oh. 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 turn the floor over to them. Uh, I'm going to give you a, hopefully a very brief background on the show that we're talking about today. Um, uh, so Ten Lost Years, Kate, was produced by a company called uh, Toronto Workshop Productions, which was uh, uh, founded and directed by a man named George Luscombe. George Luscombe uh, was born in Toronto in 1926, um, and he's considered one of the early practitioners of alternative theatre in Canada. Uh, he trained, he went to England and trained with Joan Littlewood uh, in the 50s and then came back to Canada and started Toronto Workshop Productions in 1959. Uh, the, uh, and, and he was heavily influenced by the work that Joan Littlewood was doing in things into forms of physical expression and also uh, sort of ways of motivating psychological uh, response, shall we say. And Maya is going to speak to us directly about some of the, those kinds of ideas. Um, uh, so he was sort of connected in theories of Rudolf Laban, who was a movement specialist, with some of the theories of Stanislavski. Um, he was the, so he returned to Canada in, in 59 and started Toronto Workshop Productions, uh, which was uh, started as a progressive left-leaning theatre in a basement down on Fraser Avenue, down in the King and Dufferin area. Um, and in 1967, moved to 12 Alexander Street, which is the current uh, building uh, where Betty's and Bad Times is that, that building. So that, so that really is the building that I associate with Toronto Workshop Productions from 1967 to about 1988, I guess it was, that, uh, that, that Alexander Street was closed for a while and then came back as the Buddies and Bad Times building. Um, through Luscombe, the emphasis of the company was on training and ensemble performing with an engage and an engagement with social, and, uh, social problems and realities from a left-wing Marxist perspective. Uh, the company's most successful shows had a strong theatrical aspect to staging and a not always popular or successful integration of a strong political perspective. Um, they did shows